Hello everyone. This is Mark Harrell, Senior Pastor of Forest Hills Baptist Church. Thank you again for joining me today. You've probably heard the term, the lesser of two evils. And certainly this term has been used a lot lately during the election. Now, my question would be, how can a follower of Christ choose anything evil, even if it appears to be the best available option? Dr. Jeremy Sherman with Psychology Today states, the lesser of two evils should really be called the lesser of two disappointing options. You hope for options closer to your ideal, but that's not what you've got. That doesn't necessarily mean that your options are all evil. Perhaps your options are just disappointing. Or perhaps one is evil and the other is just disappointing. Politics is overwhelmingly vague. We pick candidates based on their character because none of us have time for a detailed analysis of their issues or policies. So it's abstract choosing, and it's easy to be a perfectionist in the abstract. A president is a leader, uh, but also a lightning rod. We blame everything on them, including lots of things uh, over which they have very little control or none at all. A president is a scapegoat in chief, unquote. Life is full of choices. At my house, Wendy is sometimes in the closet saying, what am I going to wear today? What's the weather like outside? When we go out to eat, where are we going to go eat tonight? In college, you have to also make choices. What job to accept? Where are we going to live? The list goes on. When you go to an ice cream store, and let's say your favorite ice cream uh, is butterscotch. But they only have chocolate and vanilla. You're disappointed because you are looking forward to eating butterscotch ice cream. So now the choice is just chocolate or vanilla. Now, because that's your only choice, you're going to be disappointed either way. You can choose one or the other or not have ice cream at all. The Hebrews also had a choice and Joshua spells it out for them. It says, you have a choice today, he says. Those choices are to serve the Lord or the gods of your fathers beyond the Jordan or the gods of the Amorites in the land you are dwelling. However, Joshua wanted to make one thing clear, whom he and his house would serve. He wanted everyone to know what kind of man he was by the choices he made. In Joshua 24, verse 15, And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Not only do we have to make some tough choices in life, those choices also reflect your character. Just as you see your reflection in a pool of water, your choices reflect your theology and where you stand in your relationship with God. God gave the Hebrew choices also. Through his prophet Moses, he demonstrates this in several chapters. The life and death chapter in chapter 30 in Deuteronomy, and the blessing and curses chapter in chapter 28 in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, states, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. And further down in verse 19, the text states, I call heaven and earth to witness 
against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Chapter 30 is about uh, choices of forgiveness and repentance as well as life and death. The choice would seem obvious to us and doesn't appear to be uh, the choice of lesser of two evils. However, the Hebrews still struggled with the choices they made. One of the men of our church at Forest Hills asked me recently about the upcoming election. He used the term, choosing the lesser of two evils. Of course, speaking about Trump versus Biden. We need to understand that making a choice by simply voting, we reflect our morals or our theology to others. Just as Joshua wanted everyone to understand that he and his house served the Lord God, we demonstrate our belief in God's word by our vote. If I have a Trump or Biden sign in my front yard, what does that say to others? Will they say how patriotic I am for observing my constitutional right? Or if they support the other candidate, that I'm either a liberal idiot or a privileged judgmental evangelical. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17 says, Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. You have to remember that you're not just voting for the man. You're voting for the office of the presidency of the United States of America, one of the most powerful offices in the world. If you don't honor the man, you have to honor the office, as Peter instructed his readers to honor the emperor. This country is facing many issues. As a follower of Christ and therefore a follower of the living word of God, abortion and gay lifestyle issues are on the forefront of any other. I cannot find in the scripture, thou shalt not accept any immigrants, and thou shalt close thy borders with a wall. Now, certainly I believe in sovereign borders, and we should know who is coming in and out of our country. With that being said, if the candidate that I'm thinking about voting for it's for closing our borders, which I support in a way, but supports same-sex marriage, transgender lifestyle, gay lifestyle. The issue of the sovereign borders does not supersede the other issues. My vote is not about choosing the lesser of two evils. It's about voting against issues of evil. Is Joe Biden a sinner? Absolutely. Is Donald Trump a sinner? Absolutely. They were sinners before they got into office and are still sinners today. But look in the mirror and you'll see another sinner. No candidate is without sin or skeletons in the closet. Are you holding up a particular candidate to higher standards than you hold yourself? Jesus told a parable about this very attitude. Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. He says, two men were up in the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give tithes to all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified 
rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And the one who humbles himself will be exalted. As a pastor, I have not been called by God to tell people how to vote. But as a spirit-filled follower of Christ and a patriot, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and stand against any political party, candidate, presidential, or gubernatorial who doesn't do likewise. If you don't know what the platform of the parties, um, part of, um, excuse me, the platform of the political parties are, then take time to review them. Just as I describe scripture, it doesn't matter what the scriptures mean to you. What matters is what the author meant when he wrote them under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter how much you like a candidate. If he or his party doesn't take a stand on what thus saith the Lord, how does it reflect on you to agree with them with your vote? I know these are challenging times and somewhat confusing for a lot of you. There are so many issues on the table, so to speak. But for me and my house, we will vote according to what the Word of God says and what the party represents, what their agenda is. And if their agenda is advancing a gay lifestyle or same-sex marriage, uh, anything that goes against the Word of God, we cannot support that agenda. And we will show that with our vote. I ask that you pray and just get into the scripture and also check out uh, the political party's uh, platform, what they represent. Now, I know a lot of those things that we may not be able to trust. <laughs> One of the things that's uh, very funny about politicians, especially this time of year, is they will make promises they will never keep. And that's okay. Uh, we expect they're, they're politicians. So just remember, uh, I believe that just as much as we are going to be judged for every idle word, I believe that God will look upon us also about what we supported. Did we support the lesser of two evils? Or did we support and stand against what went against the word of God? Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an excellent day today. And God bless you.